Yo, everyone, welcome to another session. Really exciting day today. We have lots of updates, so welcome back. This is the Zen God, as always. If you've been liking the content, please like, subscribe, leave some comments in the comment section. But wow, XRP retook the fourth spot on the coin market cap, so it's, it passed up Polkadot again, as it should. Uh, we're up 52% for the last 24 hours, last seven days, we're up 54% sitting at 43 cents we'll we'll revisit this in a, in a little bit and talk about some altcoins but uh let's check out today we woke up and we seen it touch on coindesk they said it hit the 24-hour high of 51 cents so it's been an incredible day i think it's only just beginning but uh we'll see we'll see i'm in it for the long run so i don't really care what happens uh, I, I'm the type of person I wish it was still in the 20 cents so I could still continue to st uh, stack my bags up. But this is just a good day. Lots of people are finding out about it. People are asking questions. So the sky's the limit. From what I've heard from a lot of the technical analysis people, like the people that study the charts, I don't really study the charts as much, is, is if we pass 86 cents, the next, like, we're probably going to skyrocket to a dollar to even $3. So the 86 point is like a really crucial uh, resistance point. And once we, we pass that, we're supposed to moon. So hopefully with that pump on Monday, we could do it. So this is just some information on the price. I wanted to do more of a, uh, uh, an XRP talk, talk for the beginners. So I was thinking if I was a beginner, where should we start with? Where should we begin? If I'm brand new to XRP and I want to know like what's its purpose and a little bit more about it. So today I thought we'll do a, a deep dive down uh, with uh, Brad Garlinghouse, our CEO. So we'll do a, a deep dive with him. And then some of the key things that XRP is solving for the whole marketplace. So um, that's what I thought would be cool for today's topic. So, um, Let's start with our CEO. So our CEO is Brad Garlinghouse. He is on the committee for the World Economic Forum. Brad is the CEO of Ripple and a member of the board of the directors. Prior to Ripple, Brad served as the CEO of, of uh, blah, blah, blah. He was a president of this, but he was, he was big at AOL when AOL was really popular. He was also pretty big at Yahoo. So he was part of that original internet boom and now he's part of the, the blockchain boom, working as the CEO of Ripple. So one of the things that he said he learned from working at Yahoo was uh, they were focused on too many things, like, like uh, certain people just focused on, like Amazon only worked on books, right? So their whole focus was mastering books. Once they master that marketplace, they could then move to like other sectors. So Brad Garlinghouse learned that from the internet. And he, when he came to Ripple, they had all these different ideas about how they could use XRP and digital assets. And he was basically like, look guys, let's just focus on one thing, specialize in it. We heard Ryan Zagone last video kind of talk about that too, how you need to be specialized. So they decided to specialize on, on, on payments, just specifically for, especially cross-border payments and just payments in general. So for the past, However many years, I think it's been like eight, 10 years it's been around. They've just been working on specializing payments. That's because of his leadership. So we'll go into like leadership is really important in companies. So that's why I want to show you guys Brad Garlinghouse. So as I promised last video, I was going to tell you guys about his vision and his definition of success isn't about a short term pump. It's about what happens th three to five years from now maybe even 10 years from now. That's how Brad Garlinghouse gauges success in this company. So this is a really good guy to follow, Crypto Bear on YouTube. He has a 20 part series and it really goes and shows a lot of cool things. This is called the Chinese of Bamboo of Digital Assets. Basically that, like if you know the story about the Chinese bamboo, it takes a long time for the bamboo to sprout, but once it sprouts, it like skyrockets. And we've seen living proof today. Once XRP moves, boom, it moves. It, it, it already jumped 50%. So let's watch this and uh, let me get it all set up. 
Okay, so that was a video of Brad Garlinghouse's long-term vision of success, what his definition is. This next video is going to be one of the key use cases for what makes, X, what makes me so bullish on XRP. Basically, when, uh, the, what, what XRP does is create an internet of value so that way everything, every payment network in the world is compatible. So just like telephones, like we don't have to ask people, hey, are you on AT&T before we call them? But with payments, we do. We have to ask them, hey, are you on Zelle? Hey, are you on Cash App? Hey, are you on Venmo? And both of you guys have to have the same app. Both of you have to have Cash App in order to send each other money. So basically, they're looking to modernize and futurize payments and make it more modernized, like a 20, like how we should expect. Payments are also very slow. So it takes about, if we want to send money overseas to Australia, it's faster to actually fly and hand deliver the money ourselves than using the traditional payment systems. So we'll talk about that too. But let's enjoy this quick video with um, Brad Garlinghouse when he's on CNBC. Um, had transferred money in the past. Absolutely. So at its core, Ripple has been all about enabling what we call an internet of value. Let's make all of these different networks that really don't talk to each other interoperable. We've all had the experience where, you know, when you ask a friend, you say, hey, I need to pay you money. Are you on Venmo? Are you on PayPal? Or outside the United States, maybe Alipay or PayU. Isn't it funny? When I ask somebody for a phone number, I don't say, are you on AT&T? Are you on Verizon? I just get their phone number. The idea behind pay ID is to simplify the ability to send someone money the same way to make it easy, as easy as sending an email. I don't ask someone, are you on Google or Yahoo? I just send an email. And so pay ID enables whether you're a large bank or I'll use a, a very successful regional bank in Chicago called Byline Bank. If you're an account holder there and I want to send you money, it should be as easy as typing Brad dollar sign Garlinghouse. And it, whether it's resolving to a, a Byline Bank or to Bitcoin, you know, all of those naming infrastructure can be much more, much simplified and interoperable. I want to try and understand more what and who this disrupts. So who do you see as the main user of this sort of technology? Is it consumer to consumer money transfer or ultimately could it be a company paying another company for, uh, I don't know, buying, buying a unit of theirs, for instance, or inventory or, I mean, how big could this be? Well, so let me start by saying something about the word disruption in that sentence. I actually don't look at this. Uh, we're thrilled and honored to be on the disruptor list. I think disruptor, particularly in Silicon Valley, can be a word that's kind of overused. That you know, it, it worked for Uber. It worked for some, but I think to some degree, it's not about move fast and break stuff. It's about building. It's about partnering and enabling. So when I think about what PayID is doing, and really when I think about what Ripple's doing overall, how do we partner with the industry and make it more efficient? how to make it better for consumers, how to make it better for small businesses. What we're seeing with pay ID is not that it's gonna disrupt a bank or disrupt a payment provider, it's gonna make them more efficient, it's gonna reduce friction, it's gonna make it easier for consumers, for small businesses. And if we can reduce the friction of payments, we actually can unlock a lot of things we don't really think about, micropayments. There's a whole bunch of kind of almost science fiction, Blade Runner kind of examples that if the friction of a payment can go to zero, it's gonna make all of our lives a lot simpler, a lot better. It's going to bring people into the financial community that are either underbanked or unbanked. All right. Brad, we're going to leave it there, but it's always great to speak. So there you have it. That was a great, every time I watch that, I pick up on new things. That's a great clip. I pretty much remember I told you guys that, that term friction, make everything more frictionless. So yeah, they're doing a lot of great things. And the way that Brad communicates it, the whole Ripple's vision, he, commu he, he expresses it in a way that everyone can understand. A lot of these other people, they, they talk in like really like science-based terminologies and people don't really get it. He makes it so simple, so easy to understand. So this is another clip from Crypto Bear. I've been really liking his videos lately. So it's, these are older clips, but if you're a beginner, you have to know some of this stuff. So a lot of people don't know that Swift has a huge fail rate. So right now when we send money across borders, people don't even know if the other end received it. It takes days and a lot of them actually fail. So it's, it's really, it's, some people even call it like a 19th century rail. This is developed in the seventies, I believe. 
So let's watch this clip real quick where uh, they're talking about the SWIFT system and you guys will see like how much SWIFT needs to be upgraded after this clip, I promise you guys. And there was something very interesting I learned from one of your uh, speeches uh, earlier on talks, that SWIFT has an error problem. Uh, you wanna talk about that? You know, it, it's a really good point. I, I sometimes struggle with how to describe this because I grew up in Silicon Valley. Uh, uh, to be fair, I moved there 20 years ago, but in my professional life, I grew up in Silicon Valley. And in Silicon Valley, if you're in the tech industry, you talk about, you know, three nines of reliability, 99.9% .9 reliability or four nines. Six nine. Sigma and all that. Yeah, so think about this. You know, when you use Google, the search box on Google, it always works. I mean, the, 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 the success rate is 99.9999, I think it's six nines. Imagine if six out of every 100 searches you typed into Google didn't work. It just failed. 6%. 6%. 6%. Swift's published error rate is 6%. Now, I, you, I will talk to corporate treasury people and tell you it's actually higher than 6%. Uh, but even if it's a 6%. So what happens if it's a 6%? I mean, well, it means that you know, human intervention is required because, hey, somebody misspelled Faisal. You fat fingered that account number. Faisal's account number doesn't match Faisal's name. And it, it's a reason why there are thousands and thousands of people embedded in error correcting and chasing down those, those payments that kind of get lost in the system. Imagine if that happened with email, 6%. Yeah. I mean, imagine. <laughs> That's a good, if 6% of your emails didn't go through without human intervention, uh, yeah, that, that would, that would our, the information Bummer. society we live in today would not work. And you don't come from a banking background. So you not also don't come from a cryptography background or a computer science background. Just to, and yet here you are, CEO of a company that is using cryptography mathematics to solve an old age problem of you know remitting money real time. Well, I'll say a couple things. One is I've always been a bit of a geek and you know did some coding earlier in my life, but never you no know, formal training around computer science uh, beyond you know basic stuff way back when. But to, to me, the reason why Ripple has been successful is because we've focused on a clear problem for a clear customer. You know, there are a lot of companies at, at Money 2020 that are thinking about blockchain technologies. The best counsel I can offer is understand what customer you're serving, understand what problem you're solving. There's a lot of people out there that I, I, I think it's a technology in search of a problem instead of a problem in search of a technology. Even when I got to Ripple about three years ago, we were looking at a bunch of different use cases for blockchain. We we're thinking about identity, we we're thinking about smart contracts. We decided to focus on one. And that focus has meant we have hundreds of people focused on solving that problem for our customers. And we now have well over a hundred banks and financial institutions around the world that are working with us. Uh, we just announced our product that uses XRP to deliver that liquidity. We, we productized that in Q3 last year. Uh, we announced our first customers uh, today. You know, we have some of the largest payment providers in the world using uh, XRP for their payment flows into Mexico. At the end of the day, if you're solving a problem, meaning we're reducing the cost and increasing the speed, I'm very optimistic about the continued adoption of XRP as solving that problem because it works. Yeah, so that was a great clip. It actually even went into the whole thing about his philosophy of specializing in one and in, in focusing on one problem that exists, the payments issue. So um, I'm actually having this issue right now with uh, Uphold because I'm using my bank to purchase my XRP on the Uphold app. If you guys want to know where to actually purchase, and this is not financial advice, you can purchase on BitTrue and also Uphold. But the thing is, I can't transfer my, my coins from, here's a real world example. So I can't transfer my XRP off of Uphold onto my ledger until like three to six days because my bank has to settle the, the deposit. So even though it says the money's there, they loaned it to me. Uh, that's like the, the background of what's actually happened with the payments. So until the, all the stuff clears, I can't, I can't take my XRP out of Uphold. So I can't wait for this to happen because I want to be able to send my money like instantly. I don't want to have to wait. So here's another big key moment that a lot of people need to know and understand if you're new. Uh, XRP was in uh, at the Swiss National Bank. Was the only person from the private sector there. Some big name, Christine Lagarde. 
uh, Brad Garlinghouse. All these people are some of the most powerful people in the world as far as banking, and Brad was invited. Um, we could watch a little bit from this clip just so you can kind of see uh, what goes on. Uh, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, who is the CEO of the financial technology company Ripple. I will start off by uh, also thanking Charles, thanking Thomas, thanking Christine. Uh, it's an honor to be included. And uh, as was introduced, uh, I think they saved me for last so that I could uh, talk about the, the, the private sector version of this. I also start by kind of explaining the basics of what Ripple is and what Ripple is not. Uh, Ripple is a private company. We're based in California, uh, about three or 400 employees around the world. And we're trying to solve a problem. We're selling technologies to banks and financial institutions to solve a cross-border payments problem. To be clear, we have not focused on the central bank digital currency issuance. Uh, our view is very much there needs to be interoperability globally. And even in a world of CBDCs, you still need interoperability to, to solve that problem. Uh, also, before I dive in, you know, my comments are more focused on kind of explaining how Ripple is approaching this, this problem as opposed to just CBDCs. But I thought it worth spending a moment on how we think about blockchain at large and why it is such an interesting technology and I think appropriate for central banks and commercial banks to be looking at. For me, the novelty of any blockchain technology is the ability for two parties to transact without trust, but with certainty. So today, anytime we transact, we are transacting through a central counterparty, whether that be a correspondent bank where Ripple is focused, or that be a Visa or American Express, what have you. So I cut that video short. You guys should definitely go watch the full video. I believe it's about 30 minutes. But he was so calm, collected, being in front of the most powerful bankers in the world. And a lot of people say there's no need for someone from the private sector when all these digital, all these central banks can create their own coin, right? Well, he's pretty much coming in there saying, hey, you guys can't. You need to have someone in the middle. So let's say you have the Chinese digital central bank digital currency, and then you have the American central bank digital currency. This is just like cash app and venmo they don't interoperate that's why brad garlinghouse comes in he's like cool you guys all have your cbdc's you all want to have your central bank digital currencies however you need the you need the person in the middle you need the bridge xrp is the bridge so that xrp i mean let's say the us dollar goes through you guys see the logo has the x it goes through the x and then the XRP ledger is the new trust. You don't need to have the correspondent bank. You don't need to have the respondent bank. You have it go through the XRP le ledger. The algorithm uh, does the exchange for you into, let's say the peso automatically. So XRP is the bridge that both the whole world can agree on and trust. And uh, it cuts out all the, those, uh, like the, the slow outdated correspondent banking and all that stuff. So here's one final video with Brad Garlinghouse on our deep dive down like who he is, how he talks, how he thinks. And uh, uh, so let me show you one more. This one, he's with the IMF. And uh, you can see how comfortable he is with these people. Uh, can you see those? Oh, there's two votes. Let me try. Do you see <laughs> IMF holding crypto assets in the future? Oh, shit. They're over here, that's easier. You wanna take one? Go for it. The first one's for you. IMF, do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. Uh, I think we uh, stunned uh, Ross into silence with that one. For that so that was a cool video with Brad Garlinghouse hanging out with uh, the IMF guy. And, and uh, he looks pretty comfortable with him to me. So a lot of people speculate that XRP is pretty connected with the IMF. So let's check out the, the market today. XRP is doing great, up 50%. 
Cardano is is thirty six cents. Stellar up twenty percent, thirty two cents. We've done a video on Stellar a few weeks ago, uh, just over a week ago. Dodge coin is going down. Theta, this is a pretty cool project. IOTA, it's pretty cool. So Zillica is doing great. This is one coin that I haven't been able to do a video on yet. It's up 20%. If you get on uphold. Algorand is doing amazing. We did a video on this a week ago and it's up 20% since our video. So um, this is a good one. And then we did a video on Hedera, it's down. So like I said in the video, uh, we might want to wait a little bit because it skyrocketed up to like 11 cents. So it wasn't the time to buy. So this is a good time to get in potentially. And then there's one more that we did a video on that's doing really well that I haven't checked on in a little bit. It's not even in the top 100. So the reason we're, why I really like Algorand is because it's ranked like 50. So it has a lot of room. So the, as this climbs, the price will climb. So like, I think this project should be eventually in the top 20. So it's really low. I don't think that many people know about it. But uh, there is a, that, we did a video on, on, on a Quaint and now it's 30 bucks. When we did the video on it, it was 20 bucks. So everything that I've been sharing with you guys has been on point and I've given you guys some good suggestions, even though this isn't financial advice, this is what I'm doing. But so far, everything we made a video on right after has done extremely well. So we're moving in the right direction and uh, let's keep up the good work. Uh, thank you guys. Please like, subscribe and continue to uh, support this channel. Have a good night.